Okay, this one's really, really short. So I might add another one onto it. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, go away. Okay, the root of the word, or excuse me, the root of the world system, the way of Cain. Immediately, they begin constructing a system to include or exclude people. This also occurred with First John. They leave us in one sense, but remain zealously building. Cain was the first to build a city, and his lineage is all about productivity, constructing a world system. World systems are primarily about inclusion and exclusion. Hmm. Seduction and uh, exclusion. First John's warning. Who would have been excluded? Likely those on the line of life in Genesis 5, such as Seth, Adam, and Eve's replacement for Abel, and their descendants who walked with God. They were not of this world. They were strangers and pilgrims not recognized by Cain. Their righteousness, which is Christ himself, was rejected. Their profession was scoffed at. Abel was murdered. This is the true nature of Cain. Amen. First John discusses the same thing. First John 2.19 they may leave us, but they are attempting to seduce you and exclude you. Uh, uh, Diatrophies? Di di okay. Um, once uh, preeminence among the brethren rejects the apostles and even casts people out of the fellowship. Uh, uh, Third John 9 and 10. Is it 9 and 10? Third John 9, yeah, 9 and 10. This was a novel occurrence in the church during the time of the first uh, of first John. Someone was exercising lordly authority in the church, casting people out of the fellowship for receiving the apostles. This was within 30 years of the Lord's resurrection. The church life is a brand new situation, and yet this kind of thing was already happening. I'm referring to 1 John quite a bit here because that doctrine really shines light on the significance of Cain. And Cain shines a light on the darkness spoken of in 1 John. First, uh, yeah, 1 John. Amen. It also boils down to this. It's crucial to understand Cain and Abel in the light of their perception of God, which signif significantly controlled their destiny and their response to God. Then we see the lines that this produced. In Genesis 4, we have the line of Cain. And in Genesis 5, we have the line of Seth, who replaced Abel. Seth can be viewed as Abel, resurrected from the dead, if you will. But these lines are very different. In Cain's line, there is no mention of the passage of time. That's interesting to me, uh, which is quite interesting. Yeah, that is. Um, Cain's line is all about building, building, building. The strangers and pilgrims not recognized by Cain. Their righteousness, which is Christ himself, was rejected. Their profession was scoffed at. Abel was murdered. This is the true nature of Cain. First John discusses the same thing. Although they may leave us, they are attempting to seduce and exclude you. Diophrates, uh, Des uh, desires preeminence pre among the brethren, rejects the apostles, and even uh, casts people out of the fellowship. This was a novel occurrence in the church during the first time of First John. Someone was exercising lordly authority in the church, casting people out of the fellowship for receiving the apostles within 50 years of the Lord's resurrection. It's a brand new situation, but it was already happening. And I know I already read that again, but I figured I'd just go ahead and do it again. Um, throughout these chapters, I refer to 1 John often because its doctrine illuminates Cain and highlights its, its significance. Um, in, first, uh, in first through third John, everything... John is referring to centers on the story of Cain and Abel. 
it all boils down to this. It's crucial to understand Cain and Abel in the light of their perception of God, which significantly controlled their or their their uh, destiny and their response to God. And the reason why I go ahead and read it again is because sometimes he puts in extra stuff that I think is um, uh, good, but yet I don't want to take away from, I, I, can, I don't know which one to read first, you know what I mean? Because um, I don't remember. So I just figured, what the hell, I'll just read them both. <laughs> um, okay, so I pray you have a good weekend and um, see you Monday.